want to start by aligning my uh, comments with that of uh, Senator Henry Martin, who just spoke very eloquently about some of the issues that uh, surround uh, common interests, uh, communities, condo uh, complexes, uh, and their uh, boards, et cetera. Um, he clearly knows uh, the industry very well from his many years in real estate, and uh, I'm also a realtor, so I, I share many of those same experiences. And I appreciate the bill that's before us as far as its intent, uh, but I do have some concerns. But before I get into the bill, I just want to one last time confirm that, in fact, we are working on a bill that has been amended and only reflects the uh, section one language, which regards, uh, which is regarding the uh, study of the finances of condominium uh, common interest disclosures, et cetera. Uh, through you, Mr. President. Senator Cabrera. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, that is correct. Senator Sampson. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Uh, so we're dealing only with uh, nine lines of text. Uh, in law. Uh, I was concerned because just looking at the uh, CGA website, uh, it's, it's very odd to me. It shows that we adopted uh, the amendment deleting sections two and three, which were somewhat concerning uh, in this chamber before sending the bill to appropriations where it was voted on. But the uh, copy that is listed on the website shows the joint favorable uh, language that came out of the Appropriations Committee still including sections two and three. So I don't know if that is a mistake. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but I do want it on the record that we are voting only on nine lines of text and that uh, uh, those other two sections have uh, been removed regardless of what the website says. And, I, and I'm, I'm satisfied with the answers that I've received. I know we've been over it, but I just wanted to get that on the record. So since it's just a simple bill that really uh, focuses on nothing more than a study. It says the Commissioner of Housing shall prepare and submit a report in according with the provisions of the general statutes to the Joint Standing Committee of General Assembly having cognizance of matters relating to real estate, and the report must include an assessment of the funding of reserves involving any common interest community in the state. And um, my in issue with this bill is really about not whether or not we should be uh, concerned about these uh, common interest communities um, managing their finances well enough, it's just really a matter of perspective about whose responsibility that is. And this would take something that is completely in the realm of those unit owners and whatever management company they may uh, employ and their board of directors that they elect from handling their finances and involve the state. And this is always a concern for me because while I know there's good intentioned people uh, who work for the state of Connecticut and many good intentioned people who serve in the legislature who would say, we need to protect the people of Connecticut by coming up with a policy that requires certain types of disclosures about uh, the finances of a particular condominium complex. Um, I believe that much of that already exists first and foremost. Uh, that those disclosures are required at the time of sale uh, as part of our current law. But to engage the state of Connecticut in collecting this data seems to me to be a prelude to policy down the road that will result from such data. Uh, they're going to create uh, a, uh, a task force here or they're going to they're uh, collect this information and then ultimately they're going to use it to establish a policy that certain uh, privately owned condominium complexes are going to have to meet certain qualifications and requirements. And that's where I object. Because these finances are a matter of record to the unit owners. They are managed by the people involved. And we already have requirements for disclosure when uh, there are individuals uh, making a purchase. Uh, and I look at the way the state of Connecticut manages its own finances, and I say, I don't want these people in charge of anything. I don't want the state of Connecticut telling some private entity what they must do to manage their finances, whether it is a condo association or anyone else. And I also see this as somewhat of a slippery slope, because at some point, where do you stop when you start telling a private entity that happens to be um, made up of several or more 
private citizens who own property to telling individual citizens who own property how they must manage their finances. We already have mechanisms in our law to handle each one of those circumstances. And I don't believe it is the place of state government. In fact, I think the proper term would be compelling state interest. I don't see a compelling state interest in attempting to regulate uh, that process at all. Uh, and I just wanted to, to raise uh, an objection to that, uh, Madam President. Uh, you know, the Republican Party is uh, the party of small government, of protecting individual liberty. And for those listening, I, I just want to remind everyone that that's really the debate up here on almost every issue. We all want to see the best possible results for the members of our society, and we all want to see the best possible result for every individual involved. But the question is whether or not you believe the government is the solution to problems. And certainly there are common interest communities that do not manage their finances well. That's a for sure. But the marketplace resolves that issue. The uh, value of the, those properties will decline, and they will be purchased by others. And people will recognize that if they want to maintain the value of their uh, property, that they must manage it properly, and they must be involved in managing it properly. And the more the government starts to get involved, it is a message that individual citizens not only should be less involved, which is a terrible message, but also that it's going to be taken care of for them in some way. And I am very much against increasing the dependency of free citizens on the government in any way. And this bill is just a, a very simple example of the government moving into an area where it doesn't currently occupy to begin the process of collecting data so they can start making a regulatory scheme for it. And uh, I'm just not in favor of that. And I would encourage uh, all my colleagues, but particularly my Republican colleagues, to recognize that that's the defining issue between the political parties, is that the Democrat Party uh, has long believed that government uh, has more of a role in society to solve problems and create solutions, and the Republican Party um, is historically the party of limiting the government in interfering with uh, individuals, their freedoms, their rights, and their ability to make good decisions regarding commerce. And I want to maintain that because the people we represent deserve that choice. And uh, I often am, am concerned that um, my Republican Party is drifting into the realm of where the Democrats are uh, and, and just uh, choosing to be a different type or maybe I think they might describe it as a better manager of uh, the people's business. Uh, we should not be managing the people's business at all. We should be hands off. We should have only the government that we need. And in this particular arena, uh, I believe that uh, there's no place for the state government. These people can handle it fine on their own. The market will solve any uh, potential problems. And I'm going to vote no on the bill as a result. Thank you very much, Madam President.